The most important factor for our current financial environment is the central bank activity. Clearly, we've noted that being particularly evident as of the financial crisis and most recently during the ongoing repo crisis. This won't stop as a result of fixing underlying issues. It's all about covering up the public's view and allowing the mess to continue. This, of course, is unsustainable and what breaks down as a result is anyone's best guess. The trouble is in the sheer magnitude of the disaster this this time around. Here we go. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at what's going on with my new favorite topic, the repo crisis. I'm going to show you what's going on with Morgan Stanley firing a whole bunch of people. We're going to look at the corporations. We're going to talk about the freight volumes, what's happening with agriculture ever since the trade dispute had begun. I have a lot of information to get into, so let's begin right away. Repo crisis is ongoing and you can see that once again the year-end funding has been an issue even though they said that it wouldn't be a maturity date. Here happens to be January 6th, 2020 and you will notice that of course they submitted $43 billion worth and of course the maximum being $25 billion oversubscribed yet again this continues to happen even though they said it wouldn't. Now I don't know about you but whatever they say ultimately doesn't really mean much this is the overnight operations you could see since the 17th of september where it has gone i've been tracking this all throughout it's been fairly consistent of course there are variances day to day but clearly there is a need for the federal reserve to step into this one trillion dollar per day market they are providing a lot of liquidity there the top four banks are heavily heavily involved in this and of course i did previous videos about that but this is just showing you that the problem is still going on today the Fed has been in full firefighter mode ever since, and of course they're talking about the repo crisis, along with the US Treasury to try and make sure that the spike in rates isn't repeated over the critical year-end funding period. And this is why I brought up this initial statement, because we are looking at them actively intervening in the markets on a daily basis. They are trying to maintain rates within that given range, and of course they are failing to do so. We saw that internal rate going up to 10%. This is a huge problem because the markets are unable to deal with it like that. And that's why they brought in this whole repo management they were doing. This happened before. And of course, it's a process that can always be done by the Federal Reserve. But we've just never seen it this bad before. There's a couple points in here I wanted to mention before we move on. You can see that they say short-term liquidity is no substitute for a proper long-term fix they will not fix it they will not resolve it and of course this is only going to get worse as time goes on as i have said many times before as of course most of you do agree with they discuss the systemic issues it's not just down to the too swift reduction of the fed's bond holdings from the quantitative easing program when they brought in this whole quantitative tightening policy they said it would be about as interesting as watching paint dry and they would slowly but surely get rid of their assets and they would wind it down and everybody would be happy about that because it would be very predictable but the market didn't like it at all then you saw what happened just at the last few days of 2018 they completely reversed course they said that they were going to go instead of increasing rates multiple times in 2019 that they were going to start cutting rates of course they turned everything around very very rapidly because of what was happening in the markets and the general sentiment was moving downward we saw assets in 2019 just take an absolute beating things have certainly changed ever since this was an interesting point that I wanted to bring up, which was quite the opposite of what I talked about in the previous video. Similarly, trying to blame hedge funds for their arbitraging activities misses the point. This is meant to be the world's most liquid money market, extending the overnight secured repo market to longer term dates could rapidly ease much of this funding bottleneck. Look, I don't know what's going on underlying all of this. I don't know all the details and what's happening behind the scenes at the Federal Reserve. But there is one thing that is very clear. Things are really, really screwed up right now in the financial system. 
And there's a quote in this article here that really summarizes it in a very simplistic manner. The New York Federal Reserve has spent hundreds of billions of dollars to keep credit flowing through short-term money markets since mid-September when a shortage of liquidity caused a spike in overnight borrowing rates. The Fed's interventions have entered a third month. Concerns about the market's dependence on its daily doses of liquidity have grown. And look at what James Bianco said. The big picture answer is that the repo market is broken. I did a video actually about this talking about how the market is broken, specifically the repo market. It was only a few videos ago if you see it. They are essentially medicating the market into submission. This is not a long-term solution. When you try and pump up $320 billion into these markets in just a few months and it doesn't have the impact that you thought it would, how would they ever Ever going to turn it around. You know, they've gone beyond QE 1, 2, and 3. They still have yet to admit this is QE 4, doesn't matter. Suzy is expanding at a rate that we have literally never seen before, and the underlying issues still have yet to be resolved. Have they even discussed any of the underlying issues? No, none whatsoever. Of course, we have things that are going on within the government itself. We have the massive deficits. We have the impossible debt that is just just piling up on every single level. The national debt, of course, taking center stage usually, but just like the deficits, just like everything else, they are ignored. Nobody wants to touch it anymore. There is no politician that's going to go near it. Nobody in the government is willing to address the elephant in the room. Morgan Stanley provided this chart here and basically what it's saying to summarize it is that we have volatility being pushed down as the markets are going higher and higher. And why is this the case? Of course, we know it is quantitative easing. QE is the reason why we have all the problems. And if you're an investor in equities, all the benefits, this is it. You don't need to look anywhere else. Quantitative easing isn't a good thing, of course, because because essentially we are putting a band-aid over a massive wound and that is never going to resolve anything. It's only going to make matters worse. You need to actually heal. You need to fix the problems and that's not going to be done by anything that they've conjured up so far. I had just done a video about all the job losses. We're looking at the banks, industrial, it's coming from retail, it's coming from everywhere. And now Morgan Stanley is cutting jobs due to uncertain global environment. Now they're getting rid of 2% of their workforce, which if you look at the percentage, obviously very low, but they employ a lot of people. And of course, take one company like Morgan Stanley, they're getting rid of 2%, doesn't seem like a large number. But when you add it up on top of all the others, that I shown you 75,000 globally the number keeps piling up and this is apparently the good times what's going to happen when things turn south it's going to be intense it's going to be insane i really think that all of these massive corporations all of the governments central banks everybody they seem to all be on the same page maybe it's not necessarily something that is verbalized but the point is that they are trying to just keep everything on the down low we don't want to have of anybody freaking out. Celadon files for bankruptcy, leaving more than 3,000 without a job. Okay, so here we have yet another company that's suffering as a result of what's going on in between China and the United States, at least that that's what they're saying. There are some serious underlying problems that are going on here. It's not just one industry. It's not just one company. You could blame it on this particular company. Maybe the management was bad. Maybe they had some problems with certain customers. Look, this is going on all over the world and it's happening over such a long period of time. A lot of this has been going on since 2018 into 2019. We're almost through here. That's basically enough time to figure this all out. I'm looking at it objectively and I'm seeing the truth. Now this happens to be related to soybeans and pork products. US exports of soybeans and pork products to China versus the rest of the world. We've seen some big changes here. The gray area are rest of the world and the orange is China. 
China and you can see China's share has increased quite a bit, but it's still down significantly from where it was a few years ago. Obviously, there has been big problems in between China and the United States. And despite what we've heard, despite all that, well, you know, China is already buying from the farmers, things are fantastic, $50 billion, and so on. If you actually do some due diligence, and you are able to track where these different cargo ships are moving, you would see, that things have really changed in a short period of time. This is the vessel map of ships carrying agro products, and it is very clear to me that we have a difference of opinion with the mainstream and what we are actually seeing in reality. And this basically just shows you each of these green dots is one of these vessels and the direction that they're moving in. A lot of this is going from South America into China. That's overwhelming right now. That is isn't the case when you look at what's going on in between China and the US, all right? We're just not seeing that. Basically, they're trying to point out the lack of activity from the United States when it comes to the ships moving in and out. So to me, this is really telling. I think it's really important and it's a real indicator. It's not necessarily something you're just seeing posted out there in the mainstream media. This is an actual fact. I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you're supporting this channel. So I do appreciate that very much. If you want to learn about passive income, if you're interested in building a business, there are so many different business models out there. You can go out and you know set up your own shop, create a brick and mortar store. You can try to create your own website, try to generate traffic to your website, try to learn the ropes. But if more people understood how to sell on Amazon, at least at the beginning, I think they would realize that they've missed out on an opportunity this whole time. I created this course for my subscribers to learn how to do this because so many people were asking for some solutions. They want to know how they can make money right now in these times today, as well as the economy when it gets worse. This is the information that you need to know. I made it free. I made it free for you, even though I see courses out there charging 1000, 2000, and even 5000. In some cases, you're not going to pay a dime with the Amazon GPS. So check it out at the Amazon GPS.com. If you want to learn about the financial system, if you want to know what's going on underlying this system, I broke it all down in my two books. A lot of what I talk about in these videos, I had brought up in these two books because I knew that these systems, they never change. We always deal with the same crisis over and over again. If you're interested, check out the link in the description. You can go over to Amazon and flip through the pages of the books for yourself. If you're more interested in the audiobook version, that's available at themoneygps.com. Hold on, wait a second, don't click off. Have you seen this video? If not, definitely watch it. All you gotta do is click that button. I'll see you there.